excited that you've joined us here for Hype Online tonight. As you can see, we're getting ready to start here in just a couple more minutes. We want you all to go ahead and share this broadcast with your family and friends before we get started. Get as many people as you can to watch. We're looking for the Lord to do some mighty things here tonight. Brother Josh has a great message prepared for us that I believe is really going to touch some souls. So if you can, go ahead and like and share this, comment, get it out there so your friends can see it. We want to see what God has in store for us. Hang in tight with us. We'll be back in just a minute. Welcome to Hype Online. If you're joining us for the first time, this is our online version of our in-person youth rallies we like to call Hype, helping young people everywhere. And that's exactly what we want to do. We want to be a help to all young people everywhere there is in the world. So we pray that this broadcast helps you tonight. I also want to say that if you miss one of the in-person youth rallies, that's okay. 
because we have another in-person youth rally coming up in two months in San Jose, Costa Rica. We are excited about it. I know that the people of Costa Rica are excited about it and they have been preparing. They've been communicating with me. I've been communicating with them and they are getting all excited for this youth rally that is coming their way. So if you are able, we would love to have you there in Costa Rica and be a part of that event with us. Now, I know that you're also excited to win some prizes. So tonight we're going to be giving away two $25 gift cards. And the way that you have a chance to win is by sharing this broadcast. So we want you to do that right now. Just go ahead, pause everything, and just share this broadcast so that you will have a chance to win one of these $25 gift cards. And we just want you to be blessed and be ministered here throughout this broadcast. And so just stay with us. We have a lot of things going on tonight. We have some really important aspects of this broadcast that I felt like the Lord is really impressing upon me to share with you all. And we'll get into that a little bit later. How many of you remember that about two years ago, we introduced to you Victor the Victorious right here on Hype Online? Well, Victor don't get out a whole lot, but recently he did visit the Georgia State Convention. So let's take a look at Victor. Yeah, with everybody. Good job. Good job. Now, 
As you can see, Victor sure loves to travel, and he loves to meet young people everywhere, especially those gleaners. Did you see how he just loved being there with all those young people? So he does love to travel, but what do you think about his little club car that he had going down the road there? Uh, I did notice one thing, though. Victor needed to wear his seatbelt, but at least he did have his helmet on, and he was ready <laughs> for any occasion. Um, but we are just so glad that Victor was able to go to Georgia State Convention, and hopefully he'll get to attend other conventions, maybe go other places as well. So if you're interested in having Victor come visit your convention or your state, region, why don't you send us an email? Let us know that you would like to have Victor, and we'll try our best to see if he can make it. Later in tonight's broadcast, we're going to introduce to you the new theme for the Victory Leaders Band 2022 2023 church here. So don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Worship the Lord with us tonight in spirit and in truth. I want to read to you Psalm 150. It says, Praise ye the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in the firmament of his power. Praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Praise him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise him with the psaltery and harp. Praise him with the timbrel and dance. Praise him with the stringed instruments and organs. Praise him upon the loud cymbals. Praise him upon the high sounding cymbals. Let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. And I encourage you to engage the Lord in worship. Engage your heart with him. Worship him tonight. This is so important that we worship before we get any further in this broadcast tonight. So let us do that now. Worship the Lord. I love you, Lord, for your mercy never fails me all my days. I've been held in your hands from the moment that I wake up till I lay my head. Oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. Of your voice, you have led me through the fire. 
in the darkest night. You were close like no other. I've known you as a father. I've known you as a friend. And I have lived in the goodness of God. And all my life you have been Aren't you thankful for the goodness of God? He is so good to us. He is better to us than what we deserve. And I'm thankful, thankful for his goodness. Here tonight, I have a message that I feel like I really need to share with all of the young people of the church and maybe those that have strayed from the church, strayed from their relationship with Jesus Christ. I want them to listen, I want them to hear the word of the Lord tonight. So I ask that you pray for me, that I say what needs to be said, and that those that need to be ministered to will be ministered to. There are two parables I feel led to read to you tonight from Luke chapter 15. While these two parables are completely different, their meanings are connected. Luke chapter 15, beginning at verse 3. It says, And he spake this parable unto them, saying, What man of you, having a hundred sheep, if he lose one of them, doth not leave the ninety and nine in the wilderness and go after that which is lost until he find it? And when he hath found it, he layeth it on his shoulders, rejoicing. And when he cometh home, he calleth together his friends and neighbors, saying unto them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep which was lost. I say unto you that likewise joy shall be in heaven over one sinner that repenteth more than over ninety-nine just persons which need no repentance. This parable describes a sheep that has become separated from its herd. This leads me to ask several questions, such as how did it get separated? What drew the sheep away? Did the sheep try to find its way back, but felt too lost to find its way home? While we may not know the reason for the separation, we do know that the scripture prescribes the solution. The solution is to go after that which was lost. Exactly what the shepherd did here. He left the 99 and went after the one sheep that was lost. This requires a diligent and organized effort to rescue the lost sheep. The rest of Luke chapter 15 talks about a son that was lost and needed restoration. Now let's read that parable, beginning at verse 11. And he said, a certain man had two sons. And the younger of them said to his father, 
Father, give me the portion of goods that falleth to me. And he divided unto them his living. Verse 13, And not many days after, the younger son gathered all together and took his journey into a far country. And there wasted his substance with riotous living. And when he had spent all, there arose a mighty famine in that land, and he began to be in want. And he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country. And he sent him into his fields to feed swine. And he would fain have filled his belly with the husk that the swine did eat, and no man gave him, gave unto him. And when he came to himself, he said, How many hired servants of my father's have bread enough and to spare? And I perish with hunger. I will arise and go to my father. And I will say, uh, I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee, and am no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of thy hired servants. And he arose and came to his father. But when he was yet a great way off, his father saw him. Now listen to this. And had compassion. And ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. What a beautiful story. Verse 21. And the son said unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in thy sight. And am no more worthy to be called thy son. But the father said to his servants, Bring forth the best robe and put it on him. And put a ring on his hand and shoes on his feet. And bring hither the fatted calf and kill it and let us eat and be merry. For this my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. And they began to be merry. The father in this parable had two sons, but lost one son to the world. His son was drawn away by the lust of the flesh and the pride of life. There was obviously something appealing about that worldly lifestyle that drew him. He had an inclination to leave home as soon as he could, and so he did. Does that sound familiar concerning many young people today? They're so ready to get out of the home underneath the, the rule of their mother or their father. They just want to get out and be on their own and be free. They don't want no rules. They just want to do their own thing. God knew what type of environment and conditions to create in the son's life that would cause him to consider being reconciled back to his father. The Bible says there arose a mighty famine in the land. The famine caused the son to be in need. But it appears the famine had no effect on the father. The father still had everything that he, was need, he needed. He had no problem. He was not affected at all by this famine. But the son was. Instead, the father's response, he was ready. He was ready to see, receive his, his son home. Now, I want you to think about this here tonight. God knows how to orchestrate the right events in each of our lives to cause us to respond to God when God is trying to get our attention. As you know, the son went home. The father received him with open arms. His father was excited, glad to have him back. The son was initially concerned about the reunification with his father because he was unsure of how his father would react. Maybe he felt that his father was just going to come down real hard on him and just hammer him with, with shame and, and tell him, hey, I told you so. I told you this is how it's going to be. But you wouldn't listen to me. But the father didn't do that at all, did he? The father naturally could have been angry with his son. After all, his son disgraced his name and wasted his inheritance on riotous living. It's reasonable to say that this type of conduct would upset any father. Instead, the father's response was completely opposite. The well-being of his son was more important to him than the wasted inheritance. It was more important than his son's poor life choices. He was concerned about the well-being of his son, and he wanted his son to be home safe and sound. 
The father was overwhelmed with joy knowing his son was lost and is now found. He was excited. You see, the son thought the father was probably going to be angry and extremely upset. But that wasn't the case, was it? The father was just so excited just to have his son back home. The father didn't hammer his son with shameful comments. The son already recognized his failures and his waywardness and therefore didn't need his father or anyone else for that matter to shame him for his actions. Because obviously God had already been dealing with him about his actions. Because God created this environment in which caused him to consider being reconciled back to his father. Now let's make application with these two stories. I shared with you these two parables because God has placed something on my heart to present to you tonight. Have you noticed that since 2019, everywhere in the world, youth have struggled? It is as if Satan has targeted the youth and unleashed a full assault against them. He is trying to sweep an entire generation away in a flood of moral and social decay. Many have been deceived to think that there is no God and their actions and behavior will go unaccountable. I want you to listen to this. In the parable regarding the son that left home, the son was indulging himself in riotous living. What exactly does that mean? It means that he lost his moral compass. It means he was recklessly extravagant. It means he had sexual behavior that was offensive and went against moral standards. He was out of control. This same spirit of riotous living is taking hold of youth even as I speak here tonight. In this spirit of riotous living contains practices that are trending in the world. Let me explain. It, it's obvious nearly everywhere you go that being homosexual or promoting homosexuality is popular. It's being promoted to youth through shopping malls, t-shirts, music, TV shows, movies, even through politicians. Everywhere they look, it's being promoted as if it is popular. Satan is trying to create a new normal for the young people. And riotous living is that new, no, new normal that he's using. The spirit of riotous living says it's okay to express yourself even if it's offensive to others. The spirit of riotous living says you deserve to be happy. The spirit of riotous living says you are the God of your life. You don't have to answer to anybody. You do your own thing. You do what you want. You do what pleases you. The spirit of riotous living says that Christianity is the problem. The spirit of riotous living says there is no heaven and there is no hell. Because Satan is trying to deceive the young people of the world to believe that they will not be held accountable for their actions. That they can live any way that they so desire and that everything is just going to work out just fine. But I want you to know Satan has placed a blanket of deception upon so many youth in this world. And it is our responsibility to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ and tell them the truth. Tell them what thus saith the word of God. There are youth in and of the church that has been swept away by riotous living. They have been separated from the safety of the fold. They have strayed. They are lost and have separated themselves from the presence of Almighty God. Last year during the General Assembly, when I was preaching the message during the VLB program Saturday night, or in Friday night, excuse me, in that night, that message, I said that the devil cannot make you take your armor off. Satan cannot force you to remove your armor. If your armor comes off, it is because you chose to take your armor off. You willingly removed every piece of your armor. And only when you remove the armor do you become vulnerable. Because the armor of God is able to withstand 
every fiery dart of the enemy. The armor of God is able to withstand anything that Satan may throw against it. So if you have been one of those young people that have taken off their armor, it's time to put it back on. If you are one of these that I speak of today, then this is for you. I'm going to pray that God in heaven will create and release in his power an environment in your life that will cause you to be reconciled to the heavenly father. I pray that God will raise a mighty famine in your life that will cause you to consider how good that you had it in your father's house. How good that you had it when you served the Lord with all of your heart, with all of your soul, with all of your mind and strength. I want you to think about how good things were then. Amen. In the parable of the prodigal son, the father symbolizes our heavenly father. If you will be reconciled back to Jesus Christ, he will not be angry with you. He will not hammer you with shameful comments, but he will be overwhelmed with joy knowing that you were once lost but now found. In this parable with the prodigal son, when the son come home, the father was so excited and so full of joy that he had a big celebration. He said, kill the fatted calf. We're going to eat. We're going to be merry. We're going to celebrate because my son is home. And so Jesus Christ wants to celebrate when you come home. He's ready. He's ready to celebrate. All of the heavenly host right now, this very moment, is ready to celebrate for when you come home to Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you are one of these that I speak of tonight, I want you to know we are sending a search party for you. Just as the shepherd left the 90 and 9 to go after the one that was lost, we are coming after you. We are coming to search you out. No matter how far that you have run from God, you may think that you're so far that you can't be reconciled. But I want you to know God has put us in a place right now. He is calling and raising up youth leaders right now to search you out because you are important to God. God didn't want you to leave. We didn't want you to leave. No one wanted you to leave. And we're coming after you. We're coming to search you out because we love you. And more importantly, Jesus Christ loves you. And I say this to you, please do not turn us away when we find you. When we approach you, don't turn us down. Don't turn us off. Please listen to what we have to say. We want to carry you back to safety, to the fold. You may be beaten and bruised by the prince of this world, but we want you and your bruises because our God is able to heal. Do you hear me that tonight? I know that when you got out there in the world, things didn't go quite the way that you planned it to go. Things didn't go the way that you thought it was going to be. And you've gotten hurt. You've been bruised by the enemy of your soul. And I want you to know God is ready to heal those bruises. He's ready to heal that hurt. He is ready to heal your heart and restore your soul back to him. Tonight, God has directed me to present to you Project Restoration, Restoring in the Spirit of Meekness. This project is an organized fight to win back youth and restore them to a relationship with Jesus Christ and the Church of God. The project begins tonight, right now, this very moment. As you are watching me through this broadcast, the project is now. It is on. And it will continue for the next seven months and end on February 28th of 2023. This project will target backslidden, backslidden youth 
from 2019 to current, ages 12 to 35. Right now, at this very moment, we want you to submit names. Names of individuals who need restoring. On the other side of this studio, we have ministers. These ministers are ready to take your submissions and they will be praying for them tonight. In addition, for the next seven months, you can submit names online. Submitted names will be prayed for and be contacted by the Victory Leaders Band from General Headquarters via mail each month until this project is completed in February. A detailed record of who is contacted will be kept by the department. These names will also be submitted to the state, regional, national VLB coordinators where the backslidden youth resides. The state, regional, national VLB coordinator will organize a team to make constant contact and prayer for the backslidden youth. Leaders, now is a good time to reactivate the youth life teams. Now is the time to do it. I believe that we are in an emergency. This is not a drill. This is not practice, but this is an emergency. There are young people that served and worshiped right along beside us in years past, and they have strayed away, and they're now in the hands of Satan, and it's time we fight and win them back. It's time. Reactivate those youth life teams and go forth in the power and the presence of Jesus Christ. Because the Lord will be with you. He will. The state, regional, national VLB coordinator should then host a special welcome home celebration for every young person who has been restored. Galatians chapter 6, beginning at verse 1, says this. Brethren, if a man be overtaken in a fault... Ye which are spiritual, restore such an one in the spirit of meekness, considering thyself, lest thou also be tempted. The scripture just told us to consider ourselves, lest we be the one out there in trouble. Lest that be us. And I'll tell you what, if that was me out there, I would want someone praying for me. I would want someone to send a search party for me. God help us tonight with this. Verse 2 says, Bear ye one another's burdens, and so fulfill the law of Christ. Let's do that. Let's bear one another's burdens. Let's fulfill the law of Christ. As I've said, this is an emergency. Can you think of one young person right now that needs to be restored? I can think of several right now. As I stand before you, their names and their faces come before me. They need help. Will you take up this call and help them? Please. Take up this call. Help these young people. Please help restore this lost sheep in the spirit of meekness. At this time, Brother Grayson Kent, the communications director here at General Headquarters, and Pastor Christopher Anders will be reading the online submissions and praying for each individual. We're going to send it over to them right now. You know, Brother Christopher, the, the message that we've heard tonight, it's been so powerful. And I think it speaks to the uh, urgency of the time that we're in. You know, there, as, as our uh, youth coordinator has, has given us instruction or given us the uh, direction tonight, there are so many young people that have come to mind uh, who are... Right. With, without the Lord, who, who just have lost their way, um, have been uh, pulled away for one reason or the other. But, you know, in the grand scheme of things, the one reason or the other part don't matter 
as much as the fact that they're away. Just that they're not here with us anymore. And there should be an overwhelming burden within us to care for them, to to reach out to them, and to uh, to show a love and compassion the same way that Christ showed to us that we were all at one time or another, we were in that same position. Not that we necessarily lost out with the Lord after we came to know Him, but we were lost. So we've experienced that same goodness and that same grace of the Lord, and He's shown it to us. We still enjoy His blessings. There are those among us who had that experience and for some reason or another lost out. Right, right. You know, I was thinking, Brother Grayson, as I was reading the scriptures here that Brother Farthing brought us to in Luke, the 15th chapter, uh, it's not just the parable of the lost sheep or the parable of the prodigal son. It's also the parable of the lost coin. And I want you to know tonight, wherever you are, you are a treasure to God. But not only to God, you're a treasure to us. We love you. We care about you tonight. And we want you to know we're waiting for you to come home and come back yes. with us again. Yes, yes. And, and I believe that as the names continue to come in, and we've already got a, a pretty extensive list uh, here already, uh, it, it seems to me that, you, you know, I think this is a message that touches everybody because we all know somebody we right. all there's not a there's right. not a single person who's watching tonight that doesn't know someone uh, who has lost out with the Lord and who is right. is needing to be restored I, I believe if if we've got a few names we'll go ahead and get started here yes we've got a few here uh, TJ Kyle Felicia Ashley Savannah uh, these are just a few here to name uh, Gabby uh, Allison Drew, Madison. You know, just a few more. We've got Jonathan, Kelsey, Daniel, Liz. You know, again, so many names. And, and you know, I don't want to take the time and just read out all of these names. And, and for those who are watching, you know, these are not just... Uh, we have, as our, our coordinator told us, we have... We do have uh, contact information, and we plan to reach out to each one of these individuals uh, through through the Victory Leaders Band Department. But as we're gathered here right now, let's go to the Lord in prayer for these names. There'll be there's still time to send your names in. There's still quite a list for us to go through. Uh, But let's go to the prayer for these names. Call these names out to the Lord. I believe we also have a Caitlin is on the list. Uh, There's a uh, an Isaac, Stephen, Sadie, Dustin. Connor, and Caleb, again, many names. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Let's take these to the Lord, give some time for some other ones to come in. As our band plays, uh, let's worship. You know, if you're, if you're watching, worship along with them, but also let's uh, pray together. It's not just us praying here. It's right. not the VLB coordinator on the other side of the studio here praying, but it's us all together. It's us here in the studio at General Headquarters, right. but it's also you at home. Right. Binding together, praying for restoration. Yes. Let us pray. Almighty Lord, God of heaven, so much, God. we come before Lord, you right now, giving tonight. you thanks, Lord, for Lord, the opportunity that, you that you've fit, given Lord, us to be to here, leave Lord. The 99 for us. Father, as God, the one who lost, the son who strayed, to bring us to this you, point you here gave today, us that Lord. parable, Lord, to remind God, us, that you God, willing that, to leave that, the sheep. that you were willing to Lord, today we want to be willing, Lord, to Father, go I pray into the highways these names and that have been called out right now. God, there are treasures out there. Father, I pray that Lord, you there are would. those that have gone out into the world and live a riot in this life. But God, you see their souls here today. I pray, Lord, that you would minister God, you're to still them. well able to God, reach that down you and would, minister to heal them here today. To the Lord, in this way, God, 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 we pray that they are right Jesus now, whatever today. they're doing, God. God, that your conviction right will pour out upon them. Let them feel your spirit. That they can know that they are God, where they not, need to be. That, that they can know that there is a home to come back to. Earthly terms, God, that so that your that kingdom they can know is that they multiplied are more. And welcome, so that your, your, your children God, who are once in a, a part, Lord, of the kingdom God, of God, we want to see souls saved. We want to see that, God, young God, people restored. I pray right now for Caitlin. I pray for Matt. I pray for Dustin or Daniel. God, each name. Each name, we've seen, Lord, Kyle, Lord, Dustin, 
pray that you would touch them this morning. You would minister. God, you see each one and every one. God, help us, God, to continue to the work. Lord, you are well able to reach down to the end today. To carry this project forward, Lord. God, I pray. Do your work. Pray, Lord, that only you can do today, Lord. God, we thank you so for much. your mercy never fails me Lord. all my thank days. You, I've been held in your hands from the moment that I wake up till I lay my head. Oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. All my life you have. As we continue to receive the names online, you know, again, right. names just continuing to pour, uh, pour in. I see uh, a Victor. Uh, there's a William, a JJ, an I Eric. I see a Nicole, Chelsea, Brandon, Shirley, Kelsey, Michael, Andrew, uh, Anna. Isaiah, Jose, again, you know, this is not, you know, a, a large portion of our viewers are here uh, in the United States, but this is an international, right? Uh, an international project. You know, I believe that there, there is no limits uh, to the Spirit of God. There's no right. limits to the vision of this project. Uh, it, it's international, and we have w viewers all over the world uh, tonight who are participating in the, the work that that God's doing here. You know, I, I believe by the number of names that are coming in, uh, and, and it, it's going to take quite a while for us to get through all the ones that we're, that we're receiving. Um, I, it, it seems that, the, that people are listening to the Spirit of God. Yes. You know, I appreciate those who are watching, and as you continue to send in your names, we've, we've mentioned several other names. Right. We want to go back to the Lord in prayer. Again, we don't want to get, uh, we don't want to get too many names right. at one time. You know, we want to give special consideration to each one. Right. Um, so let's uh, let's go to the Lord uh, in prayer again, and yes. let's take these needs. And as as we pray, you pray at home. Continue to send in your names. Let us pray. Yes, Lord, we thank God you of heaven. again, Lord, for the goodness of God here tonight. You're so good. God, that we have the opportunity Lord, Lord, to sit in your presence here tonight. All my call, life, call you my have name. been faithful. God, you've heard the names. The different ones, Emily, God, so good, Lord. God, the different ones that I don't remember them all. Been called out, Lord. They have someone that loves them, cares about them, and knows them. Lord, bring them to your throne here tonight, Lord. And Lord, it's not just their family members, it's not just the ones, Lord, that around them that love the Lord. God, you love them enough, Lord, that you will go to the cross to carry their sins, Lord, to shed their blood. God, that your mercy and your grace would be bestowed upon them the again. God, that they can feel Thank the you. goodness of God and embrace them and surround them here my at this time. Life you have been God, continue to work here tonight. Continue to talk to us all tonight. Lord. You have been so, so
The names continue to come in. The, the prayers are continuing all over the world. We're uh, we're going to actually send it back over to our VOB coordinator yes. uh, for an extra an extra word as we continue to gather these names. Uh, I, I believe who has something that he would uh, that he can share here uh, with those who are still watching. Yes, uh, brother Josh. Thank you, brother Grayson. Thank you to everyone watching here tonight. Uh, thank you for submitting these names. The Lord is working. We're still going to continue to pray. We're still going to continue with the name submission. Um, we are thankful for what the Lord is doing right now. But I want to share this thought with you here before we go any further. The parable of the prodigal son, when the father was getting ready to... Um, give his son's inheritance to him. I believe that the father probably knew that he was going to go and waste this inheritance. The father probably knew that he was just going to go and, and it be just blown on riotous living. He knew that. But he still gave. He gave that inheritance to his son. And you see, he didn't try to stop his son, didn't try to beg him not to go, even though I'm sure in his heart he didn't want his son to go. You see, sometimes we have to understand that God has a much bigger plan than what we can even see ourselves. And yes, the son that left home he probably thought that he was just going to go live life up and everything was going to be great when he left home. But he was in for a very rude awakening. He soon found out that, that it wasn't, wasn't pleasurable being out there in the world. It wasn't pleasurable being in the condition that he was in, living the life that he was living. No. He realized that the true pleasure he had was living at home with the Father. And so I believe that 
your true pleasure is going to be at home with the Heavenly Father. The Lord is ready to receive you. If you are watching right now and you need restoration in your life, your soul, the Lord is, is so ready right now to restore you. He is. And I want you to just open up your heart. Don't hold anything back. Don't think about all the things that you're going to lose in the world or all the things that, that you thought that you worked so hard to attain because they don't mean nothing. They don't mean anything at all. You see, because the things of this world is temporal. This materialistic things, it's just going to burn up with fervent heat one day. But your soul, your soul is eternal. So commit your soul to the Lord. Commit yourself right now to Him, to His care. He is the great shepherd, right? Yes, let Him shepherd your soul. Amen. Amen. We're going to send it back over to Brother Grayson at this time. See what other names have come in. You know, Brother Grayson, as Brother Farthing was talking there about the prodigal son who went out into the world, maybe he crashed and burned. <laughs> In fact, we know he did according to the scriptures. Maybe that's where you're at today. But I want to remind you, we're not sitting up on some kind of pedestal today looking down at you. Uh, the scripture in Galatians that Brother Josh read says, Ye which are spiritual, restore such a one in the spirit of meekness. Yes. As we're sitting here tonight, we want you to know we're, we're sitting here in a spirit of meekness. We don't want you to think that we're better than you. And the next scripture says, Bear ye one another's burdens, and so fulfill the law of Christ. Yes. If you need somebody to help you bear a burden, to carry your load, reach out to someone. If you have a youth leader near you, if you need to reach out to us here at General Headquarters, whomever it may be, reach out to somebody and let them help you bear your burdens so that we can see you restored unto a relationship with God. I believe there are some more names that have come in here, Brother Grayson, if you want to share them with uh, yes, us. Yes, we have an, uh, an angel, a Chelsea, an Amber, an Allison, a Gabby, Julia, Ashley, Michael. I see a Tito. Anna, Joshua, Edgar, Maria. You know, as we've read some of these, I know we've read some of the na same names over again, but... They represent it, different people. It's different people. It's not yeah. the same people that we're talking about here. There, there are people that are in need of a restoration yes. here tonight. Yes. Uh, and I want us just to go before the Lord again, taking these names before Him, that He can do a work here in their hearts tonight. We've been singing about the goodness of God. I believe we're going to get to experience some of that goodness as this project continues on as we see restoration come yes. to some of these souls. So let's take them before the Lord here tonight. Let us pray. Lord, Lord we thank you so much, again, God, for another opportunity to call on you, God. God. Lord, that you Amanda, saw these names, Lord. Angel, Chelsea. Alice and Gabby, Allison, Lord. Julia. Chelsea, Julia, Tito, Ashley, God, Michael, Joshua. David. Lord, you've God, seen each one. You knew each names, one, Lord, from their very creation. You are the creator, Lord. God, you see the ones. Maybe we've called the same name twice, but it's not the same song for you today. God, they're in need of you. The same Lord Jesus that covered my sin is well able to cover their sins. God, and we just ask that you'll reach down to them. God, minister to them where they are right now. God, with them.
sing of the goodness of God. Oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. And all my life you have been faithful. And all my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. some requests right here some names that's been submitted and so I want to mention some of these and have prayer for them we're getting so many names in tonight and, and I'm just now looking at a list and the list was longer than what I had even expected God is touching hearts right now will you respond to his touch will you respond tonight help me pray for Lily Lily says to pray for her grandkids who don't live in a Christian home. Pray for Isaac. Pray for Michael. Pray for Julia. Pray for Addie. Pray for Amber. So many names. Pray for Kelsey. Let us pray together. Pray with me right now. Heavenly Father, Lord God Almighty, Lord, we come before your throne because we're in a fight. We're in a fight for these souls here. And Lord, we're going to this fight fully armed. We're going to this fight with the whole armor of God. We're going to this fight with the sword of the Spirit and the shield of faith. And Father, we're fighting in an accessory prayer for these young people. Lord, they have drifted, they have strayed. Lord, and I don't know what all happened in their life to cause this, but Lord, the fact is they're no longer here with us. And some of these may be with us in the physical but not with us in their hearts because they have strayed from you Lord and I just pray Lord right now in the name of Jesus Christ that you would restore them Lord that the Holy Ghost would visit them right now wherever they be Lord this prayer has no limitation right now Lord that you're able to move and work all over this world by the prayers that are being prayed right here from General Headquarters tonight. And God, we pray for these young people. Rescue them. Send your grace to rescue these. They need you right now, Jesus. Father, we believe it. And we ask in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, let it be so, Lord. To God be the glory. Amen, amen. Praise God. Have your way, Jesus. Praise the Lord. 
You know, we've con- the names continue to come in. There's a Emily and Elizabeth, Jacob, Bo, Bailey, Haley, Katie, another David. I see a Luke, an Adam, a Dalton, a Jody, a Courtney, Ariel. Crystal, Caleb, Emily, and Adam, Grace, Alvin, Kirk, Amanda, Chelsea, William, another William. Lane, Stephen, you know, it, it's, it's, there's so many names, it's, it's hard to even keep up it with is. the number that are coming in. You know, we, uh, I know you're, you're watching us looking down at our devices as we're looking, just the names are continuing to, uh, to come up and, and, and to be honest, it's overwhelming trying to keep up it is. with, with the number of, of lost souls that, that are on people's hearts tonight. Right. And I, I think that really puts into perspective where we are, the, the environment that we're in, the, 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 the place that we're in. And, you know, you know uh, Brother Christopher, it's, it's sobering. It is. You know, when, when we had our, our uh, staff meeting, our uh, media staff meeting before this broadcast, you know, when we introduced this, pro- uh, this project to, uh, to the ones who are helping us here uh, tonight, we asked for a few names just to, to have some. We gave them an opportunity to submit names as well. Right. And ju- just from us, there, was, there were so many yes, there were. Uh, who we could think of. And, you know, as we, and again, I know I, I just use this term, but, th- but I can't get away from this in, in my spirit. It's, it's sobering. It is. You know, we, the, the world is so fast paced and we get so caught up in the hustle and bustle of our day to day lives or the things we've got to do, the ministry we're doing, the, uh, the roles that we're, we're performing in the kingdom of God. And, and again, just in our daily lives and our family, it, it becomes so overwhelming mm-hmm. um, when you stop and realize that how easy it was to think of the names of young people who have lost out with the Lord just in the past couple of years. That's right. A- and it should break our hearts. And I think it does. I think the, the outpouring of response right. has, has just proven, uh, proven that it is breaking the hearts of people all over the world tonight. And you know, I, I, I want us to go back to the Lord in prayer you know, as we, we pray, uh, we will remember these names. Continue to send them in. You can send in your request. Again, you can leave a comment in the Facebook feed. Uh, also in the mobile app, if you're watching in the mobile app, uh, there is a form on the main welcome screen. There's a form for project restoration. You can go there and you can submit requests. Uh, they'll be sent to us by email. Uh, we'll receive those requests and we'll pray for those as well. Right. Uh, so as we go to the Lord in prayer, would you lead us out in this prayer, praying for these names that we have just mentioned? Yes. Lord, God, you've heard each one of these names here tonight. God. God, we're Lord, we felt your presence so here with us, God. By what we Lord, and though we are sitting here, here, God, tonight, thinking about these, Lord, at times having God, a broken heart we're because so we miss them, because we just see again overwhelmed, and Lord, where they once by were, the resp- where they're not now. By, by each name, God, each one of these names is a but soul. But God, we know that, that you're was well able to still lost. restore them here tonight. Each we one know of them is that a soul you're that is currently down here lost tonight, God, and in need of you, God. Hearts. Lord, to draw them back God, we to you, pray to place conviction as strongly them, as we Lord, can tonight, Lord, that you would that minister they experience to that these godly sorrow that worketh needs. repentance, Lord. God, and we're believing God, and trusting in names, you Lord, Luke, as you've Maggie, called these names Lord. out. God, each one that has God, been called, called these Lord. names out, Lord. God, each one that has been submitted Hallelujah. here, Lord. 
God, we're praying for him. We're looking to see him come home. We're expecting him to come home, Lord. Thank you, God, Jesus. continue to minister to him. Lord, reach down and touch him here tonight. Jesus. You know, I believe that we'll throw it back over to our VLB coordinator. I believe, you know, he's, he may have some more names that have come in. Again, it's become, as we were preparing for this, we originally prepared for us to receive the names. That's right. But as we've gotten into it and as the names have con just continued to roll in, we've we found that it, it's more, like I said, it's more than just the two of us can handle. So we're throw, we'll throw it back over to our VLB coordinator. And he has a couple more names. Just a moment ago, I had a thought concerning uh, this parable of the prodigal son. Now, the other brother that did not leave home that brother, his heart became hard toward his brother that did leave. And I want to encourage all of the young people, don't let your heart be hard, but rejoice. Rejoice when these who were lost come home. Rejoice for them. Let the Lord work in their life and let the Lord work in your life as well. I want to give a few more names here and honestly I don't know if we're going to be able to cover all of the names that we're receiving tonight but we're going to cover as many as we can and pray for these I'm going to pray for a Shirley a Tamika a Liz and an Andrew as we call these out we're just using first names but God knows who they are. He knows where they're at right now. There's Victor, Naomi. We're gonna pray for Alan. We're gonna pray for Caleb. We're gonna pray for Michael and Andrew. We're gonna pray for Jennifer. If you will, let's pray together for these. Heavenly Father, Lord God Almighty, Lord, these souls are so important to you. And Lord, you love them, and so do we. And Father, we want these young people to know that you love them and that we love them. Lord, and that we just want to ring the prayer bells of heaven tonight on their behalf that they may return home back where they belong. I pray, God, that you would just speak into their hearts right now. Lord, that you would show them how good that they had it when they served you. Lord, that they will remember that and that they will have a desire to be reconciled back to you, God. Lord, I pray for you to just speak into the hearts of these young people. Lord, help them find their way back. Lord, help them, Lord, to see the light, Lord, that we're trying to shine to them. God, I know when they're in darkness, they're in the world, it's dark, and it's hard to see, and they're spiritually blinded, but God, I pray that they will see the light that we're trying to shine tonight. Lord, may this light, which is your word, go forth bright. May it pierce through the darkness and enter their eyes in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Father, have your way in these that we have called out tonight in Jesus' name. Softly and tenderly, Jesus is calling calling for you and for me he's calling oh sinner come home Oh. 
of the Lord You don't have to carry those burdens anymore There's hope and there is healing in the nail-scarred hands of Jesus No matter your condition In His presence there is always restoration There is restoration in the presence of the Lord You don't have to carry those burdens anymore There's hope and there is healing In the nail-scarred hands of Jesus No matter your condition In His presence there is always restoration there's hope, there's healing in the nail-scarred hands of Jesus. No matter your condition, in His presence there is always restoration. No matter your condition, in His presence there is always restoration. There's restoration in the presence of the Lord. You don't have to carry those burdens anymore. There's hope and there is healing in those nail-scarred hands of Jesus. No matter your condition, in His presence there is always restoration. No matter your condition, in His presence there is always restoration. Oh, through it all, through it all, I've learned to trust in Jesus. I've learned to trust in God all oh, through it all, through it all. I've learned to depend upon His Word. Oh, through it all, through it all. I've learned to trust in Jesus. I've learned to trust in God all oh, through it all. 
He's brought me through it all. I've learned to depend upon His Word. trust in Jesus. I've learned to trust in God. Oh, through it all, He's brought me through it all. I've learned to depend upon His Word. Yes, I've learned to depend upon His Word. You know, Brother Josh, Brother Christopher, again, we were so overwhelmed by the response to this project. I believe that God, the same vision that God and inspiration that God has given you, he's, uh, he's allowed that to be shared with so many people around the world. And, and I believe Brother Christopher has another list of names. We'll share this list, and then we'll, uh, uh, I believe you have some things you want to share with us about what's going on here uh, and what's going to happen after tonight. Uh, so Brother Cr- uh, Christopher, if you'll share, the, share our list. And then we'll let Brother Josh uh, explain uh, what's next. Yes, we still have so many names coming in. We have Oscar, Itzel, Adrian, Lucas, AJ, Jackson, Amber, Josh, Mackenzie, Ashley, Andrew, Jackson, Sarah, Joseph, Roseanne, Michaela, Mark, Shayla, Lindsay, Maggie, Caden, Brittany, Madison, Dalton, Jody, Jacob, Caleb, Candace, Yemi, Courtney, Renee, Jonathan, Joshua, Alicia, Ricky, Carla, Mark, Jacob, Savannah, Charles, Sierra, Nick, and this list just continues on and on. It's just, it's amazing. It's amazing at the response. And again, all of the hurting people. You know, it, it's not just that these these are just names. They're, they're people who are hurting. Right. They may not know they're hurting, right. but they're, they're hurting. Absolutely. And we're going to pray for all of these here that he called out. And we're going to pray for those that maybe we haven't been able to get to tonight right. because they just keep flowing in. Uh, but I also want to say that we're going to anoint these uh, postcards because we're right. going to be mailing these postcards out to all of these um, these young people and they're going to be hearing from the Victory Leaders Band um, hopefully every month for the next seven months in the mail. Yes. And so we want yes. God to touch their heart every time they go to their mailbox and they get one of these cards. Yes. We That's want right. them to think about Jesus Christ and that Jesus loves them and so do we. Yes, amen. So let us pray. We're going to yes. anoint these. And we're also going to pray yes. uh, for these that has been mentioned and also those that maybe we won't be able to mention tonight. You join with me and all of us here at General Headquarters yes. as we pray for these. Yes. Heavenly Father, God, Lord, Lord, God, God, God you before. see here tonight, you, Lord. You've heard each one of these names that has been called out. What you Lord. have accomplished. God, God you know the ones that we didn't have an opportunity to call out Lord, here tonight that have been submitted. You have done a work. God, we're just asking that you'll reach down, Lord, and touch, God. Lord, continue to reach down, Lord. You see the ones, Lindsay, Lord, Adam, Lord, Derek. God, each one, Lord, that we've seen their names across their names here tonight, Lord. But God, you see the ones that are going to be reached after this broadcast is long gone. Lord, the ones that are going to be touched because these postcards are going out, Lord. God, to minister to them. God, when they go to the mailbox, let them fill your spirit, Lord, as they open, as they see these things. Let them read the words. Jesus loves you. 
and let Lord them Jesus, feel something, in Lord, in their hearts that draws them unto you, Lord, that restores them unto you, Lord. God, that we can see, Lord, salvation for our people. God, we trust in you. We're expecting you from you here tonight, Lord, because we know that you're willing. We know that you're Submitting it to you, we're designed to every day. We're looking to you. Pray now, let it be so. Touch all the things of Jesus. Lord, that we have made tonight, but also those that we are able to make because they just keep falling in. Hallelujah. God, reach down and touch your heart and your life. This very moment, we preach to you. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. God, we do. Hallelujah. So I believe you had a few other announcements you wanted to share before we uh, uh, signed off for the evening. Absolutely. I do want to say that um, be prepared for the Victory Leaders Band program Saturday night of the General Assembly that's coming up real soon. I encourage all of the young people in the church to make your banners and get ready for right. um, the new theme. I apologize we weren't able to get to the rest of what we had here tonight simply because of everything going on, but we feel that this is most important right now, what yes, God yes. is doing. Amen. So you're going to get another announcement of the winners of the gift cards. You're going to get also um, the new theme that we're going to present. You're going to get all of that after the broadcast. So just stay tuned to the website and you will get that information real soon. Thank you so much for joining with us. And I right. ask that you continue to pray for the young people. Yes, amen. And yes. we will continue to pray as well. Yes. Amen. To God be the glory. Yes. Yes. See amen. you all very soon. Yes, God bless amen. you.